with Jason Lee Bias. Jason, good to see you again. Good to see you again. So let's talk about this article from The New Leveler. This is Toward an Anarchy of Production, Part 1. Uh, so what's the deal with that title? What's an anarchy of production? Yes. Um, is that Marx? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's um, one of the ways that Marx criticized market society is he categorized it as an anarchy of production. Nobody's in charge. Nobody really knows what's going on. Um, and the reason I chose that title, obviously, is to be provocative um, because plenty of anarchists are also are critical of the market, um, anarcho-communists and sorts like that, and I'm kind of... the, per the per It's first in a series that's trying to show reasons why leftists and anarchists in particular should, pr should be in favor of markets. So you say that an anarchy of production, right, a non-planned production, is really the only way for society to function, stateless or otherwise. Uh, you know, and that the, the communistic uh, approach to production will end up with less for everybody. Right, and, but, but on this particular, this particular piece, I, I do say that I obviously, like, I agree with the calculation problem. That's going to be probably something I focus more on in a later piece. But I say that there's another aspect of this that people don't um, seem to realize as much. And it's something that I think anarcho-communists in particular would be, would be good to, to recognize, uh, which is that given that you still have to have some method of resource allocation and that you can't just have continuously everyone taking exactly as much as they, as they, as they want, you're going to have to have some way of, of, of allocating those resources. And if you limit things just to either a planned, um, uh, like a democratic planning scenario, which is something a lot of anarcho-communists favor, or a pure gift economy, that is the sort of thing that's going to make people's social status a lot more important. Uh, because one of the good things about markets is that you don't have to necessarily think that um, Kyle is a good person to buy cigars from him. You don't have to um, think that I'm a good person to buy for tomatoes from me. And part of the reason that that's important is because anarcho-communists are um, like to uh, attack rightly things like sexism and racism, homophobia, things like that. But if you reduce everything just to deliberate planning and deliberate gift economic exchanges, that's going to make those kind of subtle forms of oppression a lot more Powerful. Sure, sure. And here you say, in no small way, a communistic society ties one's ability to live and one's ability to live the kind of life they want to their ability to maintain good social standing. Correct. Um, basically, the way you could think about this is uh, you say that because the community only has so many uh, medical resources, mm -hmm. uh, that if a community has cer certain kinds of socially conservative values, and they're not likely to believe that uh, certain kinds of operations, such as a sex reassignment surgery, are going to be as important as other ones. And they're not going to want to distribute those in that way. Now, of course, I do believe that that sort of thing is important. And I'm sure that most other anarcho-communists believe that as well. Um, but the question is not what we believe. The question is what's the, what kind of institutions do we want to have in a society? We want to make sure that we don't have to rely on people having the right values for people to get the sorts of things they need. Sure. Definitely. There's, uh, there's some criticism towards uh, anarchists and libertarians that consider themselves of the left. But let me read this little passage that you write here. Individualist anarchism supports a free market in the sense that it supports private property, money, commerce, contracts, entrepreneurships, and the profit motive. Not only do we oppose any violent repression of these things, but we welcome their presence as crucial to a free society. Now that sounds pretty libertarian to me. Well, yeah, uh, I would consider you know, myself libertarian. Well, I know, yeah. I know. I'm just, I'm saying, you know, why is it important that everyone understands? Well, maybe not everyone, but people understand that left libertarianism or um, individualist anarchism are explicitly libertarian and not anti-profit, not anti-commerce right. in the slightest. Well, that term can be used to refer to anarcho-communists. It can also be used to refer to uh, certain types of Georgists or um, even sometimes kind of more liberal libertarians. And we're trying to emphasize that that's not what we're referring to. We're referring to the sort of thing that Lysander Spooner believed in, the sort of thing that Murray Rothbard believed in in the 60s to some extent, 
the sort of thing that Carl Hess believed in, especially when he wrote Dear America, um, the sort of thing uh, that Benjamin Tucker believed in. That, and that's the sort of thing that understands that not only is, um, libert should libertarians have leftist values, but leftists should have libertarian values. So private ownership and uh, ruthless pursuit of profit are good things. Yes, um, but of course, of course, sometimes people use the term private ownership to mean specifically ownership not by the workers. Sure. And I, I think that ownership by the workers is usually preferable. All right, here you say that an anarcho-communist might respond to people's interests not being taken into account by emphasizing the democratic nature of the planning they favor. But you say this mistakes the nature of the problem. Well, what is the nature of the problem? Right. What's the mistake? The, the nature of the problem here, well, first of all, obviously, economically, Calculation pro problem refers to any economy that, that doesn't have money. It doesn't just refer to um, state, state communist societies. But, and the problem I'm talking about here, uh, it, also, it is also really important because face-to-face uh, -face deliberations, while that might be better than, for example, some like Leninist model of overt command and control, that that might have a better job of taking people's interests into account. We have to remember that face-to-face -face deliberations are also the sorts of uh, interactions where the more, subtle, um, pr pr the more subtle aspects of privilege and oppression are most at play. Um, for example, uh, people talk about colorblind racism, things like that. Uh, people's kind of, uh, kind of uh, their, their social status is, is part of the conversation, it w even if they're not realizing it. And for anyone who's skeptical of the way that this might, ha might work out in an anarcho-communist society, this might be a problem, should just remember any, any large group project they've ever been a part of. Uh, this person who has the most char charisma is obviously going to be the person whose uh, goals are, are seen as most important, the person whose ideas about means are seen as most important. And that's even more true when the person in question is white, able-bodied, male, cisgender, straight, has more formal schooling than everyone else, that people are going to kind of defer to their authority even if the arrangement has the official designation of consensus. That doesn't change the fact that there are still kind of subtle aspects of privilege and oppression lurking in the background. And the reason I say that markets solve that problem is because, once again, you don't have to like somebody or you don't even have to respect somebody to, uh, to engage with them for a mutually beneficial arrangement. And... Also, one of the things about markets is that they, that they employ distributed knowledge in a really decentralized way. So since people are able to act on what they immediately, what interests that they might not be able to communicate very easily to people in more privileged oppression, uh, they are able to continuously act in such a way that will undermine those existing, uh, those existing systems of privilege and oppression. That's fantastic. Jason, how can people subscribe to The New Leveler? Yes. And uh, how can they write for The yes. New Leveler if they like? Yes, good. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, the New Leveler is always looking for new subscribers, always looking for new submissions. Um, if you're interested in either of those things, just write us at the.new.leveler, and that's L-E-V-E-L-L-E-R, at gmail.com. And if you're interested in receiving the newsletter, just tell us. If you're interested in writing, just tell us and then send us whatever you got. Um, and if you're interested in receiving a physical, physical copy, just email us and also give us your address. Yeah, sounds great. Well, everyone needs to read it. It's really, it's fantastic stuff. And, uh, and if you'd like to write, if you read it and you think that you have a contribution, just go ahead and do it. Jason, it's a pleasure. Thanks Thank so you. much for being on.